We've seen how to get in and, and start playing around a little bit with attributes and how to dynamically set up our HTML, which is cool. But I'm thinking at some point we're going to want to display some data. Mm -hmm. So does Angular 2 give me the ability to work with data? And if so, how do I do it? Yeah, absolutely. And it definitely does. And um, so there's three things we'll look at right now. We'll look at interpolation, event binding, and also uh, two-way binding. So first off, interpolation, uh, as we see here on the slide, is simply getting a variable from JavaScript to show up in our HTML in our template. So that right here, what you see is my number being a variable that I defined. I didn't even define a type, actually, just because I don't have to, but I could have. And I set it the value of 7. And then between the span tags, we use the curly brackets, which if you've used Angular 1, you'll be very familiar with. And actually, other frameworks use this pretty often, right? Yeah, Ember uses that as, mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I, a lot of um, uh, different server side use something similar as well, like Django uses something similar, yeah. um, as does um, uh, Flask. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's right. Yep. Um, so that's, that's, that's it. That's how you print variables. You can set as many as you want, print them all like you see there. And actually, right under that line, uh, I have an input there. And this is the way we can define a variable into one of the attributes of a tag. So in this case, the input we know has an attribute of value. And the value of that would be whatever we want to type into it. In this case, I'm putting in the variable my number. It's evaluating my number to number seven. So it's setting the input of the value of the input to the number seven. Okay, so the text box is going to display seven. Exactly. That's exactly right. And that's the same thing. We have uh, uh, an anchor tag and those kind of things. Okay. Awesome. So that's um, how we can print variables onto our template. Let's look at how we can um, cause our template and our HTML to trigger an event so we can write run some kind of code, some kind of logic. So what you see here is a button. And actually, this is built in HTML events, such as the click event, um, mouse enter, mouse leave, hover. Those are built in uh, events in HTML. So that's actually what we're doing here with Angular is we're, we're leaning on those kind of built in uh, events to trigger functions to run in our JavaScript version, JavaScript code. So in this case, button, we have the click event and the events we always put around parentheses. And then we set that to equal to something. That something is usually a function we want to trigger when that event happens. Uh, now it happened that the button has actually no value in it, so you would see a very small button. But uh, assuming we had information on there, we click on that button, the function in the bottom there in our JavaScript that's called do this would invoke. And we would just simply see console.log. And so you can imagine you can have this on any button, on any element really in your template, as long as you're choosing the, you know, the events that are built in you would be able to trigger any of them. Okay. Awesome. So uh, the third part I'd like to show is uh, kind of the combination of the two. It's when you take the interpolation and you take event, um, event binding and put them together, and you get what they call two-way binding. And so I want to show two things. So first off, um, two-way binding in the very bottom there for the input tag, this is a very common thing we can use in Angular, Angular 2, is the ng model object is uh, event bound so that if we change the input, we see that in real time everywhere we have printed the variable called num. In this case, I'm starting off with a num variable of just empty, empty strings, nothing on it. And in our HTML, or at least in our template, we have that being the ng model, which again, it's, it's Angular's way of defining that input to be the value of num. And it keeps track of it. So if you change num, that variable changes. Right above that input tag, I have kind of two lines lined up. I have the input of value set to num, and I also have a key up event on the same input tag that is redefining num to be that input's event uh, target value. So let me, let me break that down. It's actually pretty simple what's going on here, but it looks kind of crazy. Um, the input tag has a value attribute, and we know that. And we saw that earlier, so we can set it to whatever we want. So initially, that value is empty because we defined it in JavaScript empty. So our input is empty at that point. We also have a event. So if we do key up on this input, perhaps we type something in, this moment we let go of the key, it triggers that key up event. And that key up event says, whatever my input now has written inside of it, I'm going to redefine the num variable to it. And concurrently, that num variable is being printed on the input tag. So essentially what you get is the concept of two-way binding, where I can have a variable print on an input tag, as well as redefine that variable value to whatever I type into that input tag. So if I wanted to reprint num somewhere else in the page at the same time, I would see them both 
as I'm writing into the input tag, I could see the other num printed value in real time be updated. And that has to do because of the fact that we key up triggers that event every single time. Um, great, so that's it. Those are the three concepts of being able to uh, print variables on your template, trigger the, the template and parts of your HTML to trigger an event. And then this is kind of the two things combined where we can have things in real time be updated. Okay, now just real quick um, with that, that sitting there, um, I see the, the input with value and then the, the key up event. And I love, by the way, being able to just inline an event. I think that's, that's a wonderful bit of syntax. And I don't know of a whole lot of other frameworks that allow me to, to do something that's mm -hmm. just that, that, that simple. I love it. Um, and then obviously down below we've got the ng model. Would you say that the, those two inputs are effectively the same right now? Exactly right. Okay. And exactly obviously right. the second one is a little bit easier that's to read. Exactly right. Okay. Exactly. Cool. Um, I wanted to show both because I wanted you all to see that they are the same. They, they, uh, they act the exact same way, but you can actually see it broken down. And then once mm -hmm. you now start using ng model, you can you know that okay, I know what's going on here. It's okay. checking for an event, and it's also redefining itself. I dig it. I dig it. All right. So now that we've seen it on 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 a slide, let's actually get in and take a look at it inside of some code. Sounds good.